Miami hosting Clemson. Oh, boy. How is that on the... Hey, hey, listen. And listen. Dabo, he's talking about you need to lose a little, lighten the bandwagon up, you know, really rallying the troops. Mario Cristobal still hasn't defeated an ACC team at home. It Wait, like this year? At all. You know that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Told you. They have negative home field advantage in, in, in games that are not the Florida State game. Their fans don't show up. Um, no, I'm not lying about that. You, like The numbers prove it out. They, they don't play to the number at home. It is not the best game of the weekend, and it is my ACC poisoned brain, but like I... I am very, I am very dialed in to what happens in this game because the loser is coming out down bad. The winner, yeah, yeah, we can you know spin some things forward about how each team, what the path might look like to get back in that ACC title race. Doesn't look like as much of a runaway after Louisville goes to lose at Pitt, for example. North Carolina, you know, they go to Clemson late in the season. They still have to play Duke, so. And maybe we can talk ourselves into a two loss, uh, you know, six and two Clemson team backing its way into a rematch with Florida State. Sure. But it requires a win here. A loss for Clemson night night. Like your your goals are now what? You know, this is going to be one of the lowest win totals that you've had since Dabo Sweeney was on the hot seat losing in the Continental Tire Bowl to BJ Daniels in South Florida. Like we'll we'll see how things go. Miami, of course, losing here, devastating. What about the matchup? How do these two teams match up against each other? I think it's pretty fascinating, honestly. Like they're in some ways, they are are pretty similar. Um, both are teams that can be pretty he- pretty heavy pressure teams defensively. North Carolina cooked that Miami secondary. Like on the plays in which Miami tried to play coverage and not bring pressure, they played coverage terribly. Like James Williams and Kenshin's got exposed. Now. They did bring pressure pretty effectively on North Carolina, and I would expect Miami will go back to pressuring like crazy because if you look at it, Duke pressured Clemson effectively, and in the second half of that Florida State game, FSU's blitz rate was off the charts. Like They were just just freaking bringing it every single time, and Clemson handled that poorly uh, for that second half. So you have a couple quarters against good competition here where Clemson's offense really struggled against extra men. I would anticipate that Miami leans into like let's just blitz the world type thing, and and see there. Now, uh, Susan Miller Dringan of the Miami Herald uh, reported that she saw uh, Tyler Van Dyke on Monday in a uh, like a full length ace bandage on his leg and wasn't bending uh, the leg the, the right knee at all. Barry Cristobal said that he's not going to comment on injuries, but he's fine. Uh, Vegas disagrees, and the line moved from two and a half to three and a half. It's kind of three now. There's some uncertainty, but he does. He's not a mobile guy anyway. So, yeah. I don't. I'm not a doctor. Like I don't know. Maybe that's treatment. Maybe that's a clean out. Like if you're not on crutches, I don't think like you'd be walking around with just a big ace bandage on. Um, so anyway, maybe we have some doctors in the chat who could tell us what that most likely is. I've, I've been trying to kind of think about that a lot of this week. The one thing that I came away from watching Clemson, man, Clemson covers extremely well. Like they're getting Nate Wiggins back this week, the one of the best corners in the country. And I thought that they're especially Carter in coverage and the safeties. I mean, they had the chalk and they like Norvell schemed up one on ones where normally FSU is going to get these guys deep, like Jaheim Bell and some of the slots. Like Bear Carter, can, he can carry he's you. Carrying like, these yes. Bear Carter made himself a lot of money. In, in, in that Clemson Florida State game uh, mm-hmm. when it comes to the draft because the ability to cover at the NFL level is is pretty key. So um I mean I think Clemson's defense is pretty for real, honestly. Uh, I just can Clemson's offense answer. Like can they score you know high 20s, low 30s in hard rock? That's kind of the number I think you because I, I think Miami can get to the low 20s. Mm-hmm. I gotta push back on something you said. Only one of two things could have happened. Either Miami's secondary got torn apart or Drake May played awful. And the other day you told me Drake May was very good in the game because Drake May was 17 to 33. So if he's going 17 of 33 while tearing that secondary apart, that means he was missing a whole hell of a lot of throws. Like, so How many which, yards which one was for? it? 
Look, look at like go go on PFF and tease out the snaps in which they brought extra rushers and didn't. When Miami tried to play coverage, they played it really ineffectively, and North Carolina torched them. They did a pretty good job getting pressure on May, and he didn't throw any interceptable balls. Like he, so May played he got well. Rid of it. I thought what he played saying. well. Yeah, yeah. Well, then the, the, the secondary didn't get torn apart. The quarterback played well. No, when the secondary tried to play coverage, when they weren't blitzing, they got their they got their lunch ate. That's I my think, point. That's why Miami like. I think Miami's corners are very suspect. I think their safeties are fine. <laughs> their safeties got roasted. I disagree. Okay, much. go watch James Williams and Kenshin's just stand flat footed, get get juked out of their shoes and and misplay misplay these coverage. Now. Like I'll, I don't I'll think Kenshin's played Dude, poorly. They were bad. Okay, just disagreement. Um, as far as this matchup, yeah, I just like I don't think. Miami secondary, which I think played fine, will have the same kind of problems against these Clemson receivers. Although, like, the most interesting thing to me is that Clemson's passing attack over the last few weeks has been coming along and getting better, and I do feel like they're getting more comfortable with the system, and Clade Kubnick, Kubnick in particular is getting more comfortable with what he's supposed to be doing on each given play, and I think it'll be interesting to see if that evolution continues in this matchup, because I do think overall defensively Clemson is better than Miami, and I think Miami's defense is pretty good. Offensively, I mean, if Tyler Van Dyke is banged up, it's hard for me to think the Hurricanes are going to have much of a shot in this game because I do think they are a little too dependent on him for their offense, and when he plays well, they're very, very tough to stop. When he doesn't, they're very easy to beat. So it's like if he shows up and he's healthy and he plays well, it's going to be a game. If he's banged up or somebody else is in there, this could be an absolute route by the Tigers. Is there any truth to the to the chat conspiracy here that Tom is worried that the Bears might draft another North Carolina quarterback? The chat no. is saying. No. Um, you would take Drake May. You just want Caleb. I would take Drake May. I just don't think he's having a great year. I think he's very talented. I don't think he's having a fantastic season. Um. Clemson should be getting a little bit healthier. They were off last week, much needed. Uh, that's going to be something to keep an eye on, especially in the wake of Miami getting cooked, um, you know, going on the road after that big Georgia Tech game. And look, Miami showed some fight in that game early, but North Carolina, third quarter, night, night, just put them to bed. So this is a, this is a tough little one, two, three run. Clemson coming in a little well rested. Uh, you may have forgotten. Clemson fans wanted you to forget. They tried to delete it. I won't let you delete it. 17 to 12 was the result against Wake Forest. 338 yards of offense, a couple turnovers, you know, really uh, kind of yeah. ruined what little bit of offensive success and consistency that they really had going. So they can clean that up. I, I don't know if it's going to be like, – you talk about the line moving from like two and a half to three and a half. I don't think it's going to be close. Like I, I could see this being Clemson comes out healthier, focused, Miami at the end of this you know sort of three-game run that has been really emotional. I I think the Tigers could put it on them. The it's thing about that weight game is – Sorry, go ahead, Tom. I was going to say the thing about that weight game is how much of that was we got a buy coming up. Let's just get the hell out of here and beat this dog doo-doo team. Well, yeah, that's why it just turned into like let's just – yeah. 19 carries for Will Shipley. Like, we're just, mm -hmm. all right, come on. Let's just, let's, let's get out of here. We got this. Klubnik has had some serious drop picks this year. Like, there's some games that could have flipped the other way if he had not, you know, if, if guys don't drop some pick sixes. So he, I don't think Clemson can blow them out if he keeps playing like they are. Assuming Miami comes to play. Like, there's some chance Miami just doesn't, doesn't play hard, right? Like, we've seen them. I don't want to isolate them. So, like, I, we already talked, like, Southern Miss will look like they've quit, right? Is Miami still bought in? I know it's only mid-October. Maybe they are. So, Kate, Kate, Kate can keep this closer. Yes, I think so. Because Miami will bring a lot of pressure, and they will force Clemson's receivers to win one-on-one. -on -one. 